<laughs> Welcome back to Briggs on Books, the show that has been going on here on our station since 2008. And we changed the name because uh, COVID forced us to le learn Zoom. And now we're interviewing authors all over the world, not just Central California. So um, it's become a very exciting show and very exciting venture for us. Our first guest is actually somewhere here in California, Ken Percival. Uh, who's got a whole bunch of books out. I, I went to research you before the show started. I typed your name in Amazon. By the way, it's very easy to find your books on Amazon. And all these books uh, popped up. How many have you written, Ken? More than a dozen. More than a dozen, yeah. And um, the one we're going to talk about today, I think it's called Tun Tavern. Am I close? Yes, yeah. Tun Tavern. And it's you know that I love history, especially American history, and this tells a story of American history. Tell us a little bit about it. So Tun Tavern is about the founding of the Colonial Marine Corps. Anybody that's been gone through uh, the boot camp for Marines, mm -hmm. Tun Tavern is cited as that founding of the U.S. Marine Corps. Yeah. So there's a lot of lore about it. Samuel Nichols is sort of this character that was the first commandant assigned. Uh, he was assigned that position by John Adams. Mm. You can look into the historical record. You see the contract that John Adams signed to hire Samuel Nichols as the that first uh, commandant. And, and the story goes from there is based on filling in some of that historical record. There's not a lot of information, not even his exact birth date. So this is really aimed at being able to build out a little bit more of the lore to fill in some of the gaps, what's not known about Samuel Nichols. But he's definitely one of those unsung founding fathers. Yeah. Even though he is, uh, this is historical fiction, he's a real guy. Yes. Yeah. Now, yeah. for a book like this, you must have to do an awful lot of research. Library of Congress has been a really good resource for me. Mm -hmm. And then the, the other source is, it's just a matter of looking through to see, is there consistency of birth dates, attribution of different uh, family members? Yeah. It, it's, it, it can be really difficult to get good research. Anybody that's been a student knows, you know, I, I talked to my kids when they were growing up at high school level trying to do their research. Mm -hmm. And to be able to get good authoritative sources, you really... There, there's a lot of reading to have to be done. Yep, that's for sure. So, um, it's a, you know, I wondered why, uh, I, you know, because I read stuff all the time, I had wondered why I just hadn't been that familiar with, with the formation of the Marine Corps. I knew it was around when our country was founded, but I had no idea. But I guess what you're saying is there's just not a lot on the person in that period. Right, there, there wasn't. And, and, you know, I was having a conversation with a veteran around the Veterans Day time period. He had been putting together fundraising materials. And, and so one of the things that he was explaining to me is that anybody that goes through the, the boot camp for Marines, that that whole story about Tun Tavern is yeah. one of the things that's sort of that beginning indoctrinization. Yeah. I want to talk about that for a minute, but before we get too far, I want to move over here a little bit and show this 321 book dot shop. Let me try to say it again. 321 book dot shop banner we have up. Tell us what that is. So that will take you out directly to be able to get to all the books that I've published. It's on Kindle. Mm. If you have unlimited subscription, you can read any of those titles for free. Okay. And then it just allows you to be able to get out to have an instant read. And, and so there's not really any waiting on some of the different books that are out there right now, Life Before Yesterday yeah. is based on a true story. It's fictionalized, and it it's really takes place uh, the life of an orphan in San Bernardino, California, figuring out how to be able to move forward uh, as, you know, going into adulthood as somebody that's sort of loose with the truth, <laughs> but uh, yeah. it navigates being able to find how to, to go into adulthood. Let's put that book cover up on the screen for a second. Uh, Life Before Yesterday. Now, you say this is a modern-day book? And so this is something that is, it, it's more modern-day. It drops back to the 1950s in San Bernardino, California, uh -huh. and then ends up in modern-day Miami, Florida. Okay. And, and so the character is loosely based on an uncle. He had a really severe fall 
that he fell on a branch and it impaled him, uh, giving, when he got to the emergency room, he was given really low odds of survival. At that point, he was unconscious. And so this is the story about a guy that survived all that, being in a uh, induced coma for three weeks, and then three days later, uh, discharging himself from the hospital so that he could get back to work on his home construction project. Mm. And, and so it just it kind of looks at the personality of somebody that's just driven mm -hmm. and, you know, what's that all about? So it, it starts in his childhood to describe what gave him that tenacity. How he ended up the way he was. By the way, who would read that book? Who should read that book? You know, I, I think that it's a pretty general population book. It's anybody that likes adult fiction mm -hmm. would really have an interest in it because it's about perseverance and sort of even though it's fiction and even so that it's meant to be entertaining, I, I think it says a lot about uh, folks that really uh, are impressed by by folks that just have that stick to yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, so kids could read it. Yeah. It, yeah it's, good. you know, I, I would say that it's probably junior high school uh, in terms of the content. Yeah. Uh, different types of innuendo in it and definitely it's a broad-based appeal and does sort of kind of overlay some of today's social fabric going all the way back to the 60s and the 50s wow. when things were so much different and so one of the things that I tackle in this is that with women they didn't have the the financial control over their decisions that they have today as an example oh, yeah. Yeah. and so it delves into some of these different social issues uh, my dad was a kid in uh, San Bernardino in the 1950s, so I'm going to get him that book, and he'll get a kick out of that. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Now, um, I want to go back to Toon Tavern. Obviously, that's where my uh, interest is. We never quite got the cover on the screen. Let's put it up just for a few seconds. Um, that's a real place, right? Toon Tavern is someplace Tun that Tavern. exists in Delaware now. Okay. But it was in Philadelphia. There's a historical marker for it mm -hmm. uh, at the place that it roughly was built at. And and so it'll the marker is a historical marker recognizing that it was the birthplace of the Marine Corps. Okay. Now, as some professors have gone and done some research about this, they attribute that the actual birthplace was a, a tavern called the Conestoga Tavern. Mm -hmm. And that was likely the real place where recruiting happened and uh, where the where Samuel Nichols did a lot of the work. Yeah. It's interesting that some of these taverns, are, a lot of them are still there. I've been to some of them. Uh, being from California, nothing here is more than a couple hundred years old. But they have some old buildings and taverns and historical places if anybody ever gets to go to Boston or Philadelphia or even New York. So. That's fascinating. Definitely. I, I would say that Philadelphia probably has some of the oldest construction in, uh, you know, going back to, you know, the 1700s. Yeah. Um, Ken, uh, tell me about, because nobody could physically buy the book right now, right? T Ton Tavern? It's only on it's Kindle? It's in development, in and development. it's going to be introduced as an Amazon novella. Okay. As a, so it, it'll be a series of books. Uh, that'll be available on the Kindle, mm -hmm. and I intend to have that ready to go before Veterans Day of this year in November. Oh, yeah, that'll be a great time for it to come out. And then it'll be followed up with a hard copy, yeah. uh, with the actual hardcover version of it. That will include multiple, the, the entire novella series. By the way, uh, of the branches of the military, the Marines seem to be the proudest and most based on tradition, and, and once you're a Marine, you're always a Marine. So uh, I know some Marines I'm going to get this book for, that's for sure. I think they yeah, will it, it's, yeah, it's something that I've just done kind of my uh, due diligence on this to get a sense of, uh, anecdotally, many of the folks that have served in the Marines I've talked to, when I raise Tun Tavern, they smile because yeah. many civilians just aren't aware of the significance of it with Marines. Yeah. Well, I'm going to read it because I love that history. I love that period. And I've always wondered about that. I know a lot of it is fictionalized, but I think I'm going to get a lot of history out of it when I read it. Yeah, I do. I, I go out and use information that's from the Library of Congress and then information about Benjamin Franklin, these different characters that existed yeah. and really sort of give some life that 
maybe you don't get a great school or yeah. even uh, in the college classes, doing survey classes and so mm -hmm. forth, you sort of get the hard facts, whereas this sort of brings it, uh, breathes some humor into it, and you get a, a bigger, broader dimension of the personalities. Yeah. Well, uh, and, uh, so Frank, Benjamin Franklin's and John Adams, I would imagine, is in the book as well. Right, and then some, some lesser known folks that sort of peek into this, and so it's an opportunity to start to discover some of the founding fathers that aren't in the history books. Yeah, we've got the big five or the big ten, but I bet there were a lot more people involved in founding our country. You know, it, it's really when you go back, and I'm sure that you can remember some of the uh, some of the classes and you know the the big points that have those wide brushstrokes right. about the Revolutionary War, and you learn a little bit about you know, the British Redcoats, and their nickname is Lobster Vax. So I really try to kind of bring back some of that language in telling the story. Yeah. Uh, Ken, when I talk to you, I get a little carried away. We always go over time. I could talk to you another hour if they would let me, but we're about out of time. Any last thoughts? What do you want our viewers to know? So all this material is available through 321book.shop. When you go yeah. there, it's going to take you out to the books. You can get them instantly. They're instant reads. You can enjoy them uh, in you know an afternoon read. They're really um, condensed material that will allow you to be able to get to a, a finished story yeah. and inside of a couple of hours. That's great, Ken. I, I have not done the Kindle. Maybe it's time for me to try that. So um, I read what I call analog books. So once you turn the pages, and I do audio books now because, uh, you know, the older you get it, harder it is to read. So uh, Kindle might actually be a, a, a better read for me now that I think about it. It's a little brighter. What's great with the Kindle is you can adjust the different settings so nice. that you get your contrast. So if you really want that strong contrast like you get in the paper books, right. it allows you to be able to, to modify that with whatever device that you use. It's in a Kindle format, but you know you can use your iPhone, your iPad, oh, okay. whatever devices you got. I, iPhone, I, iPad, I have. Anyway, there it is. Three, two, one, book dot shot. Go to there and find out. Will we find out more about Ken Percival there? Yes. Good. Good. I encourage everybody to do that. This show is Briggs on Books. Stick around. We got another author coming up in just a couple of minutes. We'll be right back. <laughs> 